Okay, so today we're going to be talking about 2D vectors. Ooh, so fun. So we're going to talk about vector addition. This is something you're going to be doing for a long time. So let's remember what a vector is. So a vector has two things. It's got magnitude and it's got direction. Okay, so let's do an example here. Here's a vector. Let's say it's 10 long. Here's a vector. Let's say that's uh, 12 long. Now, if you wanted to add these together, there's two general strategies. We're going to talk about geometric strategies right now, and I'll do some geometry in a, or do some algebra in a little while to show you that way. But the general idea is you're going to combine these two. So I'm going to grab this guy right here, and I'm going to slide it over so that it is lined up, you know, the end of this one matches the end of that, the point of this one. Okay? I can't drag it because software limitations, yo. But you get the idea. So what you do is you combine them like that, and then if you connect the front and the back, you get this living large vector right here. This is the resultant vector. The resultant vector is the answer vector, okay? So the resultant is when you put them two together, or three, or ten, or whatever it is. So that's one way to do vector addition. Another way is you take your vectors, and instead of putting them in a chain like that, you put them together uh, at the origin, all at the origin from start. And then what you do is you make a parallelogram, all right? And you draw the diagonal of the parallelogram, and that's your resultant. Now, you will notice that since it's a parallelogram, this side is equal to this side, so it's really the same thing. And you're right, it is the same thing. You'll get the same answer either way. You can do it either way, I don't care, as long as you know how to do it. We're probably going to do it more algebraically, which we're going to get to, but we want you to understand what we're talking about when you're doing vector addition. All right, now you're asking, what about vector subtraction? And yes, vector subtraction is a thing. So if we have this vector here, we'll say that's 10, and we want to subtract, oh, this vector here, we'll say that one's 5. Now. I'm sort of lying to you, there is no such thing as vector subtraction. But we're going to go back to the good old way of twisting words. You can do it, but you're not going to subtract a vector. What you're really going to do is you're going to add the inverse. So we're going to add the opposite of this five vector. What's the opposite of that? Well, it's going to be flip-flopped. And that's what we're going to do. So it's going to be something like this. 10, 5, so there we go, and that's the answer. Ta-da! We're not going to be doing a lot of subtraction, but, you know, it's really not any different. So there's that. The next thing we got to do is components. Now, components is a very important part of vectors, so let's pretend we have a vector. It looks gorgeous. Now. What we are going to do very, very often is split a diagonal vector apart into its horizontal and vertical chunks. These chunks are called components. So basically, all you're going to do is if we knew this guy was 15, say, is we are going to draw a beautiful, beautiful triangle. Now, it's not just any triangle. What you're saying, yeah, it's all right because this guy is horizontal and the other one is vertical. Now, we're going to know what angle our vector was going at. Let's say it's a 30 degree angle because why not? So what we're going to do now is we are going to figure out what the components of this vector are. So basically, this big 15 vector can be split apart into two smaller vectors, one that's horizontal and one that's vertical, but we want to know what those pieces are. So for this, we're going to need your old friend, so ka toa Hopefully you remember your old 
gruesome, gruesome threesome, the sine, cosine, and tangent, folk. So, for this one, we're going to have 15 times the sine of 30. Sine of 30 is one half. So 15 times one half is going to be 7.5. Isn't that lovely? Now we're going to be doing the same thing for the bottom. So on this guy we're going to have 15 times the cosine of 30. Cosine of 30 is going to be root 3 over 2 times 15. Now I know in math class that's what you would go for but here in physics we are going to go for decimals like almost all of the time as long as you're plugging in numbers basically so we're going to have 15 times uh, square root 3 over 2 or just cosine 30 whatever and we are going to get basically 13 it's 12.99 but whatever so, what this means is if you had a vector like here, which is 13, and a vector here, which is 7.5, the resultant vector would be the 15. Okay? And we are going to need this skill for adding together vectors algebraically, which it means to be the useful way. Because geometry is so overrated, right? <laughs> Anywho's. So, let's do one, A. Eh? So we're going to add together some vectors. I've got a vector of 5, which is at a 37 degree angle here, plus this vector here, which is 13, not drawn to scale, which is at a 21 degree angle here. Okay, so what you should do first, just do this part. Just figure out the components, okay? So pause the video, figure out the components, and then I'm going to catch up to you. Did you take too long? Well, hopefully not. So this is a 3, and this is a 4, and this is a 5, and this is a 12. They were chosen. Sneakily. Anyway, so we're going to add these together, okay? Now, when we add all four of these vectors together, we're not going to worry about the 5 and the 13 anymore. We're just going to worry about the 3, 4, this 5, and 12. All right? We're going to add all these vectors together. Now, we're going to get another triangle. We're going to get a triangle that's pointed some other way. So this vector, for example, goes this way. This vector also goes this way. So we're going to add those together. You don't have to do anything weird since they're pointed exactly the same way. So I'm going to have one vector going this way. That is 9 because it's 4 plus the 5. Now, for the vertical direction, I've got a 12 vector going down. I've got a 3 vector going up. So that means I'm going to be subtracting these numbers because the 3 is kind of negative or the 12 is negative, depending on how you think of it. It doesn't matter at all. So I'm going to have 9 going down. So my resultant vector is going to be this guy here. Now, I've got a 9 and 9. It's a 45 special right triangle. So my resultant vector is going to be 9 root 2. Now, once again, we are going to use the good old decimal versions of these. So that's going to equal 12.7 about. All right Now, we could round it up to 13, but let's not worry about it too much right now. So 12.7, and we should say which direction. We can say, you know, there's tons of ways. I'm going to say at 225 degrees, right? Unit circle style. Ta-da. So that's what we're going to do when we add them together algebraically. You have to break them apart into component form, add the components together, and then recombine the components to get one vector. And that's it. That's the whole thing. So we're going to do one more. All right, so for this one, what we're going to be adding together is a vector going this way. This is going to be an 8, and it's got an angle right here of 57 degrees plus 
a vector going this way at 7, and it's got an angle right here of 32 degrees. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, see if you can finish it off. Did you do a good job? Well, let's find out. So on the top part of here, we're going to have a 4.3 going to the right. On the bottom part there, we're going to have a 6.7 going down. On this part going up, we're going to have a 5.9. And going to the right, we're going to have a 3.7. Okay, so far so good. So now adding these together, I have both pieces going to the right here, both horizontal pieces. So I'm going to have 4.3 plus 3.7, which is 8. 8.0. Now this one goes down, this one goes up. So I'm going to then go down just a wee bit of 0 0.8, which is basically nothing. And then my resultant vector is going to be right here, and beautifully drawn it is. Okay, so my resultant vector is going to be, oh, how do I figure that out? I can do the Pythagorean theorem, right? Your old friend, a squared plus point eight squared, enter. Oops, oh, sorry, hit the wrong button. 0.8 squared. So it's basically 8, alright? Sig figs kind of ruins it for you, doesn't it? So, eight, uh, you know, 8.04, which is basically 8. Okay, now how can I figure out the degrees, right? Because I'm going this way, I want to use this angle here. So I'm going to use our old friend inverse tangent, right? So tan of theta is going to equal opposite, which is 0.8, over adjacent, which is 8. So I want to do the arctan of 0.1, basically, right? L reduso. So we are going to have negative 5.7 degrees. Or you could say, what is that, 354 degrees, 4.3. Anyways, don't don't worry so much about the specifications here. The math is what matters. All right, so hopefully we're okay with this. This is a, an important skill that will haunt you for the whole year. Trust me. We'll do it, oh, I don't know, maybe six different times like specifically just a problem exactly like this but with different measurements all right hopefully you had as much fun as i did like and subscribe for more videos coming up soon